Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part two of our video series on making uh, procedural textures in Unity. So in our last video, we set up our very first texture. Right now, it's just a big block of red, but um, it you know gets, a, gets the idea across that you can, just with your code, create visible images in Unity. In this case, we ported it over to a sprite renderer. Right now, it's pretty boring, though. It's just um, a square of red. We're also not really doing um, the most optimal process for making this sprite or making this texture 2d i should say and let me show you what i'm talking about we're going to jump over to mono develop and right now what we're doing is how our process works is we create the texture and then for every single picture pixel in the texture we open up the texture find the pixel we want set its color and then close the texture so we're kind of doing that three-step process 64 times which is uh, 192, I think, steps, which is obviously not how the computer does it, but it's about roughly 192 steps that the computer is doing for us. What we would really like to do is just open it up, open up the texture once at the start, set all the pixels, and then close it, which we can do. Um, and that's only 66 steps then. It's open the 64 pixels and then shut, which is like one third the amount of steps, which obviously right now isn't going to make a huge difference. But if you're dealing with much larger images or if you're suddenly dealing with, you know, say five, ten layers in your image, that can make a big impact on your um, on your game speed. So how do we how do we set all the pixels at once? It's we kind of just set it there. If we do instead of set pixel, we can say text dot set pixels and we see here oops, that that set pixels takes in in its basic um, there's a few inputs but we'll just focus on this one it takes in an array of colors and you want this array of colors to be the same length as the height times the width of your image because then it's just going to put in a pixel for every single pixel in your texture so where do we get this array of colors well we have to create it so before we start, we're going to keep this because we still do need to set those pixels, but instead of setting them in the texture, we're going to set them in the array first, which is much faster for us. And then we're just going to dump that whole array right into the set pixels function. So let's create an array. Color brackets, I'll just call it color array, equals new color. And the size of this array will be the text.width times the text.height. So now, instead of setting the pixels by using the function, what we can do instead is set each index of the color array. And so how we do that is we need to find, instead of, we can't just say x, y because we're, we're no longer dealing with a grid, we're dealing with just a long string of numbers. So we have to do a little bit of math here, but it's not too complex. What we're gonna do is say color array x plus the y value times the width, times text.width. And that gives us the index that we want in our array. In fact, we can actually do it this way. We'll say int, uh, no, we won't do it that way. Because that's gonna add yet another step and we don't wanna do that if we don't have to. But basically what we're saying is, this finds us the section that correlates to the row we're in, and then we just add whichever position in that row. And so all we're going to do is say that equals color.red, same as we did before. And then now once we've gone through all of our pixels, our array is now full of color. So now we can set the pixels in our texture and apply it. We jump back to our scene and we have a compiler error. Oh, because I never actually put the array into color. Array. There we go. Now it knows what to set. So now we go back here, hit play. And we are successfully creating our sprite again and doing it a little bit more efficiently. So again, this is working, but it's a little bit boring. Um, we'd like to be able to obviously make pixels that are different colors so that we can actually make an image instead of just colored squares. So let's start doing this by just doing a simple, making a simple gradient. How we're going to do that is we're going to say color, instead of setting just to color.red, which is a static color, it's always going to be red, we're going to do a function called color.lerp. 
And what lerp does, if you're not familiar with it, is there's actually a number of lerps. There's numerical lerps, there's positional lerps, there's a lot of other things. But a lerp, basically, it's linear interpolation. So what it means is you're going to set a start point and an end point, and then you give it a float between 0 and 1, where 0 is the start point, 1 is the end point, and anything in between is exactly that, something in between those two. So we can say something like um, color dot black, color dot white, and then we're going to, we need to give it some sort of a value. So let's go by the rows. So we'll say y, but y won't work because the rows are actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and we need something between 0 and 1. So we're going to say float y divided by float text.width. So that gives us its you know, relative or normalized position in the image. And then we just close that off with another parenthesis, save that, and now what we should see here is a nice gradient. However, there is something still a little bit funky going on in that we've got this kind of a darker gradient up at the top where it should be white and a little bit of a lighter gradient where it should be black. And this gets into this idea of um, settings in your textures. When you import a texture, you'll, you'll see that there's like a, um, you have in the inspector, you have a number of import settings that you can choose and things, you know, um, do you want it maps? Um, what do you want the compression to be? And the two others that are probably the most important are its wrap mode and its um, filtering. Wrap mode basically st says, are you, it's used if you're repeating an image. So say you have like a big world, you know, grassy field and you've got, you know, a square of grass and you want it to just repeat over and over again. In that case, you would use a wrap. The other option is clamp, which will be basically once it reaches the end of the image, it just repeats that last pixel forever and ever and ever if it needs to. Um, in a case like this, where we're dealing with just a single sprite and we don't really want to bleed or repeat off again and again, we want to clamp it, but it defaults to, um, to repeating. So we need to do that. The other thing is what's called um, point filtering. That's basically going to choose how smooth things are. If you want really good pixel art, you want it to just be on point. However, what Unity defaults to is what's called bilinear um, filtering, which is that basically any given pixel looks at the pixels around it and will kind of adjust to blur kind of the image a little bit so that it becomes a little bit smoother. And that's, I'll show you both of these right now. And how we do this, we can actually do this, do this after the apply. We don't have to apply these settings, but we can say text.wrap mode equals, and you'll see it's it's an enum called texture wrap mode, dot, and you have these two options, clamp and repeat. Right now it's set to repeat, but we're going to say clamp instead. Save that. So now what we'll see here is if we hit play, we get that nice clean white up here and that nice clean black down here. It's not repeating, it's not trying to get back to the repeat of going to the next color again. Next, here we can say text.filter mode equals, I believe it's, oh, it's just filter mode. I thought it might be point filter mode. And you have, the, like I said, these options, bilinear, which is the default, point, which is that basically um, you're keeping every pixel perfectly to what pixel it's on. And then trilinear, which is, um, it's, it's an even higher level of blending. You nine times in a 10 don't even need it. So let's switch that over to point now instead of bilinear and see what happens. Go here, we hit play. And now we get that nice um, kind of pixely gradation where you see the exact, it doesn't, you know, this one doesn't slowly change to this color. It just kind of happens right at that line. So those are a couple of the settings um, that you're probably going to be using most when you're creating these types of images so that you can get the effects that you're really looking for in your game. Uh, we're going to cut this video off here, but in the next video we're going to start actually importing some um, pre-made textures and using those. Make, we're going to first copy our first texture to a new image, and then from there we're going to get into actually layering images on top of one another in our new modular texture. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.